Portuguese. My God. Begin. Hello. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Hello, how are you? Very nice. And you, sir? Oh, very nice. It's great to meet you guys. Oh. <laughs> Me too, sir. Right. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay. Nice to meet you too. What's your name, sir? My name is Edwin, and yours? Edwards. Edward. Edwin. 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 Oh my god. <laughs> nice. Nice name. And what's your wow. name? Well, my name is Sandra. My name is Luis. Okay. Sandra Luis. My name is Jenny. Jenny, excellent. All right, so tell me a little bit about yourselves. Okay. I, I don't know if, if you want to begin, uh, Luis or uh, or Jenny. No, Sandra, go ahead. Okay. Well, my name is Sandra Araceli uh, Ramirez de Martinez, and I um I don't work for another place because um, my husband has. Um, and a small a small enterprise of transportation from the airport, so uh, I help him. I work for him, and um, I love English first, but not only English. I love all languages. <laughs> for example, German, uh, French, Italian, Portuguese, and I love all, all languages, but. Uh, uh, here in, uh, unfortunately, here in El Salvador, uh, nobody appreciates all those knowledges, you know. But anyway, I love them. <laughs> Great. And Sandra, do you speak other languages besides English? Yes, of course, I do. And what languages do you speak? Uh, I speak French, German. Uh, a little bit of Italian, uh, and I am learning Portuguese by myself, too. Wow, quite a bit of languages. That's wonderful. Yes, I love them. Okay, great. Okay, Luis, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, um, at first, I, I live, I live I in Chalatenango, in I very farmer. We have a farm with the cow. And that mean being awake up four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> my family, um, we are five. My wife, my daughter, my son, and my granddaughter. And I, I hope to learn more in this language because it is a little hard for me. Okay. And tell me, Luis, why do you want to learn? I mean, you're you're working on the farm, you're far away from the city. Mm -hmm. I, I, well, um I I try to to work in the I I live only in Chalatenango, but uh, sometime I travel to San Salvador and for two or three days, no more. Okay, okay. All right, so you're going to use your English when you travel to San Salvador? No, no. No, only because you want to learn English? Uh, yes, yes, only, only. Okay. Great, great. Okay. Who else would like to present themselves? My name is Jenny Campos. Mm -hmm. uh, I live in San Salvador. I, I'm looking for a job. And I, I'm interested to speak English friendly. In my free time, <laughs> I, I like to paint with acrylic, watercolor, and oil. OK. That's Jenny, it. That's it. Jenny, what kind of job are you looking for? Uh, um, for um, planning, quality, or making process or project. In 
in what? In... Uh -huh. For example, in, in what area or what field? You want to make projects in in what? In education, in finance, in, uh -huh. in water, in clothing? Um, uh, 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 in in quality, quality, like in process. Uh -huh. in, in what in in what quality, Jenny? Uh, system a quality system. Uh -huh. uh, uh, for example, in for ISO, in production in in, in for uh -huh, in factory in food. In clothing, and production, and in... okay. Don't, don't worry, Jenny. Don't worry. I just I I'm not clear. It's not clear for me. You are looking for a job in quality, but is is very very big the field of quality. There are many different areas for medical. Are you a doctor? You're looking for quality in like in uh, a pharmacy or in what area? I am industrial engineer. Okay. All right. So in productions for yeah, production. okay. Okay. Thank you, Jenny. Great. Okay. I see we have a lot of people now. See many people are connected. That's wonderful. Okay. Is anybody else interested in introducing themselves? Hey, Aisa. Okay, please go ahead. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Julio Cesar. I am four years old. I uh, I live in San Luis Talpa. Uh, my favorite hobbies are uh, learn something new every day. Um, would like to watch some series. What series do you like to watch? Uh, for example, the last series I watch is the arc. Okay. The arc. I don't know if you watch the series. No, I've never seen the series. It's in the future, developing the future. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the art is not possible to live uh, more in, the, in, this, in that place. Mm -hmm. and for that reason, uh, building a, 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 a spaceship, but had some problem in the space because uh, something doesn't work in the, in the spaceship. And for that reason, uh, wait um, before before the time. And he start to investigate what happened, if someone is or has the guilty for that. But it's very interesting. Uh, I just watched two chapters. Okay, interesting, very interesting. Well, great. I'm I'm glad that you like it, Julio. I like that you like the sci-fi kind of series. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay, good. Anybody else would like to introduce themselves to the group? Do you know each other? Are you friends? Is this the first time you meet each other? Me, mm, teacher. Okay. Okay, my name is Jefferson Aldana. I am 24 years old. And currently I am in my last year of the university. And I would like to improve my English skills because in the future I would like to study abroad. And maybe in topography area or in the building area and, and then come back to the El Salvador and work here and I know just I want to get a good grade in the toe for test in the future. Okay. Why? Because currently I am working in a building company and I consider that if I can get the certification of the TOEFL, I will I could improve my position and then even change my my currently work. Okay, all right, great. Anybody else? No, okay. Alter. Evelyn, uh-huh. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Evelyn Cecilia Ceron. Um, I'm 33 years old, and uh, I think one on uh, one important, uh, well, one of my objectives in learning this course is because 
I want to get my certificate and TOEFL exam. And maybe uh, because I'm planning on, in teaching English, uh, I want to share all my knowledge with other people so they can, uh, mm -hmm. they can uh, get more opportunities uh, to practice at this language and maybe other ones. Uh, what else? Uh, currently, I'm working in a call center and and I'm been I'm in a bilingual account, so I get in touch with English. But I think that taking course and being uh being teaching uh being taught by the teacher is good because you can not only improve your uh speaking, writing, listening, and among in other skills, but also you can practice with other people that are learning English. Mm. I think mm. that's all. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Evelyn. Appreciate that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Walter. <laughs> Good evening, guys. Uh, it's a pleasure to stay with, with you tonight. Thank you. Yeah, my name is Walter. Walter Ramos, and I live in Santa Ana. Um, and I have a uh, so curious about to uh, to to TOEFL course, I don't know. I think it's the top of the English. Uh, it's so interesting and in that course because I think in this course uh, I will learn about some topic interesting or some rules. I don't know. Uh, I have good perspective about the course where I learn about about infinite uh, topics of English. Um, my dreams is is try to finish, uh, to increase my skills and speaking, um, reading and writing in English. In order to accomplish my dream is get a job in a call centers. Yeah, I I I was working at a bank for thirteen years. And suddenly I stopped because I don't know, uh, I have a necessity to study in English because I think is that the English is a good tool to try to 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 go more uh, beyond in the future. I don't know. Uh, for such reason, stay here and try to learn about English. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, I heard somebody say your name, Walter. Uh, are you? Walter. Yes. Are you heard? Are you friends or colleagues with other people here in the class? Yeah. Uh, there are um, uh, Luis, Evelyn, Sandra, yes. uh, Jancy. Yeah, I remember okay. them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do, do you work together? Uh, yeah. Uh, work together in the before courses. Oh, okay, so you were in the courses before together. Yeah, we were yeah. together. Okay, great. Okay. Well, it's great to hear um, and learn a little bit about you guys. Throughout the course, we're going to get to know each other a little bit more and the ideas of what the COFO is all about. First, let me set up the expectations. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself so that we understand. My name is Edwin, and I will be your instructor during this course. Um, just like you, I've learned English throughout many years, and I've gone on to do a little bit more about exams, preparations, and I've worked in different companies and organizations. I've worked with NGO, I've worked with USAID and as an interpreter and translator, as well as wow. some types of prestigious schools here in El Salvador and in other countries as well. So I've always had that. I've worked for in support for the last few years and I worked with Inglés Corporativo for about three years. Um, I first started teaching in 2001, so I have about 22 years of uh, educational experience as far as what we are going. Besides that, last year I also graduated and got another degree in business administration, so now I also have a degree in business administration as well. I'm going to be helping you to make sure that you understand the function and the purpose of the TOEFL to be able to reach your goals. First, I'd like you to understand that the TOEFL is a two-year validation exam. That means that when you take the course and you take your exam, the exam is only valid for two years. If you take the exam today, 
it is only valid until 2025, July 2nd. July 2nd, 2025, finish your certificate. And if you want to use it again, you have to retake the exam and be recertified. This is the maximum that you can have, is two years. TOEFL is not to teach you English. TOEFL is an academic exam. TOEFL is specifically used if you want to go and to another country, if you want to go to university, if you want to get a scholarship, it is a way to measure your English level. And that's why it is taken every two years. Because if you don't practice your English, in two years, it is considered that you lose your English. That's why the maximum validation is two years. Okay? Yes. Remember, what is the purpose of the course? Is to prepare you for an exam. That is the function. All of the other things are because you already learned them. You learned the grammar, you learned the things. Only here, we're putting them into practice in one exam to see all of the different areas. Not only that, there are many different types of TOEFL exams. Many people think there is one exam. There is not one exam. There are different TOEFL exams. There's TOEFL, TOEFL IBT, TOEFL full test, partials that we have in, in El Salvador, as well as the competitors. The competitors are TOEIC, okay? Uh, TOEIC is another name for TOEFL, is the same validation, only a different company. Any questions? Oh. Everything's clear, sir. Excellent. I'm um, right. sorry, my teacher. Uh, yes, Jefferson. What, uh, which school we say that is the, the best? Uh, for example, in my case, I would like to study abroad in the future for a master's degree, mm -hmm. which is the best test for me because I have heard in the past that for me, the best is was the TOEFL IBT, but I don't know if I could get another test and it could be better for me. Oh, I don't know, could you recommend me some one test? No, Jefferson, because each country, depending where you are applying, each country has different exams that are required. If you apply to Canada, it, it is recommended the TOEIC. If you apply to United States, it's recommended the TOEFL. If you apply to Australia, um, they accept, even in Australia, they accept a Duolingo exam uh, professional. So each country is different. And then in each institution is different for each one. In the United States, some countries are some uh, universities prefer one exam versus another. It's a name of brand. It's like for saying, I like to work Tommy. And another person says, no, I like Nautica. And the other person says, no, I prefer Skip. It's the same thing for the exams. The English exams are different companies that evaluate your English level. So the okay, first, thank you. you're welcome, Jennifer. The first thing you need to do, Jefferson, is investigate what university or what country you're going to apply to. And then look at what exams are accepted by them. And then based on the exams that are accepted by them is the exam that you're going to take. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Anyone else? Uh, teacher, I'm sorry. Um, and what about England? What kind of exam they, they require? Uh, England requires um, an exam that was based on the common European framework. Um, this is usually an exam that is going to give you a measurement uh, in letters, common European framework. Mm -hmm. So it's the idea for, you're going to be rated um, like uh, A1, A2, B1, B2, C1. This is a little bit different or you're gonna have A2 plus. Okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean about TOEIC, TOEFL, Duolingo exam, or what kind of exam they they uh, require in order to enter to a university? It's the university. Uh, again, uh -huh. the university is the one who makes the final decision. They can accept TOEFL, or they can accept uh, TOEIC, or they can accept CASAS, or they can accept whatever exam they want. But the important uh -huh. is that in that university, it's just like in El Salvador. 
that university makes the decisions of what credits to receive, what place is valid for them. Okay. Usually, TOEFL or TOEIC are both valid, only that in some they accept one and in the others, they don't accept it. Oh, very good. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Now, what is the difference? The difference is also on the type of exam that you take. As an example, when you want to go to immigration and you want to go to Canada or you want to go to Papua New Guinea or Australia, you have to take a special so for exam. You have to speak, take one that costs more money than other exams. Why? Mm -hmm. Because this one is with a digital fingerprints or this one is valid through digital reference like a passport, ID, reference, fingerprint. And then we have the Toix in El Salvador. $60, you go near uh, Metro Centro and you take the exam in, what is it, in the, the school that's there. I forgot the name of the school. Um, I think Centro it's Cultural. Centro Cultural, yes. Centro Cultural, they give you a $60 exam. No oh, problem. You can take good. it. It's good. It's not valid for other countries, but it's valid for El Salvador. Because oh, yes. in El Salvador is not all of the areas. That is the difference. You have to think about what country, what university, and what purpose is the exam you are going to take. Oh, that's it is, Yes, it is a TOEFL exam. Yes. Is valid internationally. Yes, it's valid internationally. But not all the places accept it because it's Salvador's TOEFL is for the four countries. It is not all of the areas. And El Salvador is not the speaking portion of the exam. There is the listening. There is the reading part. Okay. And then there's the comprehension. But there is no speaking. So for this, the cost is less. Oh, that's why. Mm -hmm. I understand that. Mm -hmm. So that's well, I used to <laughs> depend, depend your function, depend the exam that you need to take. Okay, and I used to work for uh, Central Cultural, but in an administrative as administrative assistant only there. Uh, oh. But I I didn't have the opportunity to 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 take the TOEFL there. Oh, it's unfortunate. Then you could save money, right? Sixty dollars, yeah. no problem. Yes, of course, I I will. I will. Okay, great. So now let me explain to you a little bit about our course and what we're going to do, unless someone else has another question. No? Okay, excellent. So in this course, this is TOEFL Preparation Module 1. In this, we're going to learn the four areas, reading, listening, speaking, and writing. And you're going to use, you're going to learn how each section is divided and the tips and tricks to help you to take an exam. This is for our function and our purpose is thinking of the pies. Imagine you had to take the pies today. <gasps> how is the pies? What is the structure? What are the questions? How do you have exam tips? What are the ways that you need to prepare yourself? It's the same. I'm not going to teach you about the pies. I'm not going to teach you science, uh, social studies, mathematics, logic. This you already learned. The PIES is to evaluate what you have learned. That is the function of the TOEFL. It is not to teach you. If you don't know, then you need to study more. You need to read more. You need to listen more. You need to prepare yourself more. The idea is to function the same as the PIES. You don't study an exam for the PIES. Is The PIES is what you learned in all of your years of school. The TOEFL is the same. What is your English that you have learned in all of your life? That is the idea and function, okay? So today we're going to begin with section one. We're going to have approximately one week for each section, which is super easy. One week for reading, one week for listening, one week for speaking, and one week for writing, okay? After each two weeks, that means that next week, we are also going to have an exam. We're going to have a midterm exam. This is week one, the four sections, very basic. 
week two, we're going to have the fourth section plus an exam where we practice reading and listening. Then week three, the normal course, four sections. And then week, the final week, we're going to have all of the sections plus the final exam where we practice everything again. Yes? Okay. So in this moment, now that we have many people, I'm going to show you the video from InSupport before we begin. And then if you have any questions, ask me. And if not, we begin with our course. El Insaforp ha trabajado con un alto nivel de profesionalismo, pensando siempre en incrementar las posibilidades de crecimiento para la gente de nuestro país. Nos hemos dedicado a que a través de la formación se generen oportunidades para los salvadoreños y así cada vez más, en un mundo más competitivo y globalizado, siempre existan en nuestro país posibilidades de superación para todos. Miles de hombres y mujeres han logrado desarrollarse profesionalmente y han ampliado sus conocimientos y posibilidades laborales a través de los diferentes programas de formación que son parte del Sistema de Formación Profesional, el cual ofrece programas de formación para todos los niveles de recurso humano dentro de una empresa. Se ha incrementado productividad de muchas industrias y cientos de empresas a través de la capacitación y formación de cientos de miles de salvadoreños con programas como Área Técnica, ofreciendo cursos técnicos para mejorar el desempeño operativo y tecnológico de los trabajadores. Competencias Gerenciales, con temas de capacitación para complementar y actualizar conocimientos para áreas de gerencia. Inglés para el Trabajo, contenidos estandarizados del inglés para hacer a los trabajadores más eficientes y productivos en el desempeño de sus funciones. Mejora de Competitividad de las MIPES. Amplios temas de capacitación, específicos para micro y pequeños empresarios. Cursos cerrados y abiertos, tratando temas de capacitación para trabajadores de las empresas cotizantes de Insaforp. Insaforp Online, cursos online con el horario y ubicación que más convenga al usuario para la constante capacitación en múltiples temas y profesiones. Trabajando con el compromiso claro de ayudar al desarrollo del país y con un equipo profesional entregado a buscar oportunidades para nuestra gente, es que Insafor ha logrado tener un modelo de gobernanza y gestión ejemplar que tiene como base el diálogo permanente entre el sector empleador, laboral y el gobierno, formando a los trabajadores, capacitando a la gente de nuestro país. Es que transformamos la vida de las familias salvadoreñas, porque en Insafor trabajamos todos los días sabiendo que, a través del conocimiento, es que estamos formando un mejor El Salvador. Con el objetivo de formar en igualdad el Instituto Salvadoreño de Formación Profesional Insafor, presentó en el año 2017 la Guía para la Prevención y Erradicación de la Discriminación contra las Mujeres en los centros de formación fijos donde se desarrollan programas permanentes de formación profesional del INSAFOR, cuya elaboración contó con el apoyo de la Organización Internacional del Trabajo, OIT, y su objetivo a largo plazo es contribuir a mejorar las condiciones y oportunidades de acceso y permanencia de las mujeres en los procesos de formación profesional sin discriminación de ningún tipo. La guía pretende poner a disposición de INSAFOR y de sus centros colaboradores un instrumento que les permita identificar, conocer, prevenir, atender y erradicar progresivamente cualquier discriminación por razones de género contra las mujeres. Posteriormente, el Instafor desarrolló un plan piloto de implementación de la guía en tres centros de formación fijos y es así como surgen cuatro instrumentos fundamentales para la aplicabilidad de la guía, siendo estos manual de convivencia, protocolo de atención en casos de bullying y acoso sexual, lineamientos para la comunicación de los programas de formación con lenguaje inclusivo no sexista y la guía metodológica para la prevención y erradicación de la discriminación contra las mujeres. 
Dichos documentos fueron elaborados con el enfoque de derechos humanos y de género, estableciendo medidas que garanticen relaciones de respeto, igualdad y equidad entre todas las personas que forman parte y conviven en los centros de formación profesional. De esta forma, el INSAFOR asume la igualdad de género como un principio transversal de trabajo, entregando a los centros de formación estas cuatro herramientas que complementan la guía para la prevención y erradicación de la discriminación contra las mujeres, a fin de que sean puestas en práctica en beneficio de las usuarias de la formación profesional. INSAFOR, formando en igualdad. Ok, thank you so much for watching the video. Any questions or any comments? No. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, very easy. As I mentioned, we already have all of our sections. Here you need, if you want to see your progress, you only click in the section of progress. And there you'll, you'll be able to see your grades and the results for each section. Each section you will be evaluated usually one or two times, but in some sections you will have up to three different evaluations. Other sections, only two, and some sections, just one. The important is to score 80 or more in each section in order to get a good score, okay? All right, then let's go ahead and begin. Let's start off with the reading section. Everybody should have access. Let's take a moment and watch our small video before we begin practicing. Welcome. This is TOEFL Preparation Course 1. In this course, you will find challenges of reading, about the reading section, two types of questions, and practices about the reading types. So the most important is this. We're going to learn a little bit about challenges. What are the difficult parts and how to overcome them? Like some techniques and strategies. Uh, how the questions are divided and the sections and the type of questions that you're going to learn. And then we're going to have the opportunity to practice each one. Many people think that the reading is only read and answer, but there are different types of questions and different structures for each part. This is important because remember, this is an exam. It's nothing else except for just a simple structure of evaluation. Here are some of the challenges that you normally face in the reading section. Challenges of reading. When we take the TOEFL test, we need to know some strategies that will help us overcome some challenges. For example, you need to be familiar with the type of questions Pay attention to the number of questions, and skimming and scanning will help you deal with more difficult questions. Okay. Now, they mentioned skimming and scanning. Um, in my experience, the number one difficulty that people have when studying or taking the exam is the time. Many people are not used to having pressure. Go, 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 go. Fast, fast. I know I, I am reading, yes, but it's not if you can read. It's if you can read quickly, if you can answer quickly. You have a time and you have to be precise, very specific. You don't know the next. You don't know the next because you are limited. It's not time to analyze. This time to analyze was before the exam when you studied. In the exam, it's time to answer. About the reading section, the reading section on the TOEFL test measures your ability to understand written academic English. It is not necessary for you to have prior knowledge about the topic in order to answer the questions. Now, that is usually the hardest part because you don't need prior knowledge, but you do need a good ability of comprehension. You need to have a wide vocabulary so that when you read, you can understand what you are reading. You're going to read about economics. You're going to read about biodiversity. You're going to read about science, chemistry. You're going to read about economics or social problems. You're going to read about different things. And if you don't know about this in general, 
is more difficult when you have to do the evaluated activities. Any questions at this moment? Um, you mean? Yes. And your recommendation about this section could be uh, we need to read some books, have this, this kind of the vocabulary using a book of the test, be, be, be coming too familiar. In this moment, at the moment, to do the TOEFL test, uh, probably to be more, probably to be easier. Yes. If we have more vocabulary. Yes, vocabulary is number one. Vocabulary is number one in the TOEFL for listening comprehension, for reading comprehension, for TOEFL is the number one, but it is academic vocabulary. Okay, academic vocabulary. So this, for example, tell me about yourself. Hi, my name is, I study. This is not on the TOEFL. This is not in the TOEFL. In the TOEFL is, for example, um, they have exam questions where they'll explain to you about South Africa, South America, and how in South America's rainforest that animals have about 10% of alcohol from the plants that fall from the trees. And that, this is what you need to have this kind of knowledge is completely different. That is why if you're going to read, it's good to read. It's nice, but you need to read those types of things. Okay. We're going to look at different ways that they ask questions. Some questions are true and false. Some question is what is missing. Some question is uh, what does this word mean? There are many different types. So, here, we're going to learn a little bit, but the best way to score a higher exam is have more vocabulary, number one, and watch your time. Always, always, everything you do is with your time. Like in your office, you have to finish by 5 p.m. I, I don't finish. I stay later. Yes, you can stay later. In the exam, no. In the exam, there is no later. You don't finish, you don't finish. The next section comes, and then you have a zero for the ones you didn't answer. So remember, always answer all of the questions on the TOEFL. I, I don't know. Okay, you don't know the last five minutes. Do, 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 do. You have to circle everything because it's about points. The more points, the better the score. The more blanks, the lower the score. Okay. Uh Yes. Uh, exit one part of the TOEFL test is using a synonyms. Signals of the word. It's yes. very important to know the signals of the word. More or less. Um, in, it is important to know synonyms of the word, but it's more important to understand the context in the reading. Usually, if you don't understand the word, but if you understand the reading, you can comprehend what they, they want to say. You can infer. And, you can infer from it, and then it's easy for you to extract the information and say, ah, this word is logical, this word is not, and these are my options. Always, it's about elimination. You are not going to know everything on the TOEFL. Nobody knows everything. That's why it's the TOEFL. It's exam for many areas. But what you can do is you can learn techniques to make it easy for you to eliminate some options, and then only have two or three to select. Always, always is going to be one that is completely wrong. Completely wrong. You eliminate, now you have a 33% chance to get it correct. If you don't eliminate, it's only 25%. It's only about numbers. If you can eliminate another, now you have 50-50. You have a high possibility of getting a good answer. Okay, thank you. Of course. Let's... Picture a question? Yes, of course. Uh, would you suggest a, a book in order to get extra information about TOEFL? Yes, a TOEFL IBT preparation exam. Ah, okay. They have, they are TOEFL exam books. And they ah, have, okay. and these exam books have practice exams and mm -hmm. typical vocabulary in the TOEFL. 
Okay. 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 This is Thank the you. most important. The most difficult, as I mentioned, the most difficult is having the pressure to do it correctly in the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Usually you have uh, three hours, two hours in the Salvadorian version, a little bit more, and you have to go and push, 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 push. You have to go quickly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is usually the hardest part. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Now we're going to learn about negative factual information questions and factual information questions. Here we're going to learn about these two types of structures. Welcome to TOEFL Preparation Course 1. In this first course, we will show you two types of reading questions, negative factual information questions and factual information questions. If you think you need to take notes, feel free to do so or you may play this audio program as needed. First, we will show you negative factual information questions. Negative factual information questions ask you to recognize information that is explicitly stated in the text. This may include facts such as major ideas, supporting details, or definitions, except that instead of only one answer being true, three of the four answers are true and you have to determine which one is false. For negative factual information questions. So let's take a look at that. Here, negative factual information. One more time, what is it? Is you have to identify which one is false. Is more difficult because three of them are going to be true and you need to find out which one is not. Right. So always, if you have the information in the reading, true. If you don't have it, if you have to infer it, that's usually the one of the possibilities because it's going to be false. Okay. Now let's look at the other form. Have to determine which one is false. For negative factual information questions, look for the words not or except in capital letters. Keep this tip in mind. For the negative factual information questions, remember that you're looking for the answer that either isn't in the paragraph or directly contradicts information in the paragraph. Now let's try a negative factual question. Here's a paragraph about sports and its risks, and here is the answer. To begin with, you know it's a negative factual information question because of the word except in capital letters. So three of the choices are going to match information in the paragraph, and only one will not. Let's see how many correct choices we can find by scanning for keywords that appear in the answers, like mountaineers fall, risks, avalanches, and so on. We may... Okay, and that's where we begin our techniques. Of course, as you can see, it's a big paragraph for one question, so it takes a lot of time to read. And time is very precious in the exam. So what is the technique? Well, in this case, you know you're going to look for except. So that means we're going to find all of the risk on sports except which one is the one we don't identify. Well, do we identify false? Right there. My, my, yeah, my we time. identify. It doesn't have to be the same word. It has to be the same information fall, falling, fell. Uh, these are the types of words that you're looking for. Not exactly the same word. Here, in the next one, we're looking for here, storms. Are there any storms? Do they talk about storms? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nothing, Look, at all. nothing at all. Possibly letter B. What about accidents? Oh, well, accidents, yes. Of right course. here. Injury, risk of injury. This is an accident. Do they talk about avalanches? Yes. yes. We can find avalanches. So even if we didn't read all of the paragraph, we can infer that the one that is not in here is which word? Which word is not in here? B. B, storms. Well, let's see if how, our, how it functions. I also need to look for synonyms of these words. 
So if we scan the paragraph for some text above false, that corresponds to choice A. We find this and it's a match. For choice C, we found that information here, where it talks about risks. Choice D is here, where it talks about skiers are swept away by avalanches. But there's nothing in the paragraph that talks about storms. So choice B looks like it might be the answer. Therefore, choice B is our answer. Okay. So look for the word, but you have to be careful because you must also understand synonyms. This is the part of the vocabulary. If you use the word accidents, how else can you say accidents? Oh, you can say injuries. You can say uh, uh, crashed. For example, in the car, they don't say accident, but the word crash is an accident. This is the part that makes it more difficult because it's also you have to interpret the different words that they have. Let's read this first paragraph together and make sure that it's clear for everyone and what it means. Who would like to read the first paragraph? Oh, me, teacher? Thank you very much. Uh huh. Okay, the first paragraph. Okay. Almost all sport and outdoor leisure activities carry real risks. Swimmers drown, mountaineers fall, skiers are swept away by avalanches. And boxers I Kyle by blouse to the heel. Oh hell, sorry. A person skilled or experienced is no gar warranty against disaster. In fact, the bird and athlete is the greater the temptation to break record of succeed in doing something that has never been done before. Continue. Um, please. Okay, danger which tests nervous, courage, and skill is an essential element that adds thrill and enjoyment to a sport. Okay? Yeah, 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 go although, ahead. Finish. Although those who organize the sport formulate their rules in a way to minimize the risks of injury and to ensure that medical assistance is readily available. No amount of caution can alter basic facts. Even the best trained horse may panic. Motorcycles give a little protection in a crash and hard driving golf ball can go straight. Okay, very good. Now, I appreciate Walter reading, and I'm very happy that you read, Walter, for us. I understand that reading out loud usually takes longer. This is a big problem because if Walter is reading like this in the exam, immediately I know 50% of the questions he's not going I to. I will fail. <laughs> yes, yes, it's guaranteed because you don't have enough time, Walter. You don't have enough time to read in this speed, one. Yeah. Two, did you read and understand at that speed? Because if you didn't understand, now you have to read again. And that is yeah. the whole time. Is right. 50% of 50%? He doesn't answer. Yeah. So this is the this is what I say is the difficult part about doing the exam. It's not that you don't know the information, it's mm -hmm. that you have to produce quickly. You have yeah. to go and read. Do, 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 do. This is where the techniques skimming, scanning, uh, trying to identify, come into play. The more you can skim, if you don't know what is skim, is where you only look for the keywords. You look for the information that they give you, right? And you go quickly. If you don't learn to do this technique, it's going to be very difficult for you to complete this section and get a good score because it <laughs> takes time. It takes time to read and analyze. Now, Walter read, who can explain to me what Walter said? Explain to me what you understand in your own words about Walter. What did he read? Uh-huh, Fatima?
Yes, hello everyone, uh, teacher. Hello. Uh, that I could understand about the, the speech is that they are talking about a, that uh, a people who, who practice sport, who play some sports, even if the person is really a good athlete and have many skills, even you can be a it could be a dangerous activity for many people. So, uh, and the risk that you can take when you start to practice some sport in a competition, for example, or in a specific moments. That's what I understood. Thank you very much, Fatima. It's great that Fatima was able to understand. And here's the part that I want you to also understand. It doesn't matter. Fatima didn't need to understand. Fatima's function in this question is not understand. It's identify quickly and go to the next. Not to understand the context. Because she is in this question is not about do you understand here? Do you understand what are the dangers? Do you understand what happens? No. And if you try to understand the reading, I can't I'm going to go back. If you try to understand, you are losing time. This question is not for understanding. This question is all of the following except ta. Okay, I look for falls, storms, accidents, avalanches. If I don't find the answer and the next is not for me to read what is the medical, what are the swimmers, what are the sport. This is not the question. The exam for the TOEFL is not the moment to learn vocabulary. <laughs> it's not the moment to try to, uy, esto no lo sabía. No, it's not the moment. <laughs> that is, this is for go and the next. Okay? That is the important part. You have to learn how to ignore some questions, how to ignore some parts. It's good. It's nice. Uy. This word is new. I didn't know. Readily. Oh, interesting. Astray. Oh, what is that? Is not the moment. This is not the moment to learn. If you want to learn after the exam, you focus and you review. But here, no. That is the part of the exam that you have to be clear with. Okay. Now, let's look at the other types of questions that we have. Inferring and rhetorical purpose questions. Let's get ready now to study the other types of questions you may encounter on the TOEFL test. Inference and rhetorical purpose questions. Inference questions ask you to identify information or comprehend an idea that is not plainly stated in the reading passage. You can recognize inference questions because they usually include the words imply, infer, or suggest. Rhetorical purpose questions. Rhetorical purpose questions are similar because they also ask for information not plainly stated. This will ask why the author has presented a particular piece of information. As a tip, if you can't identify the correct answer immediately, one suggested way to approach these types of questions is to eliminate wrong answers. Let's have a look at a question. What can be inferred from the passage? Let's take a look at all the choices. Let's go over each option. Option A, the rivers from two Canadian provinces drain into the Mississippi River. Drainage areas in Canada are not mentioned. Option B, 31 states out of all the states in the United States have rivers that drain into the Mississippi. Option C, if only parts of some states have rivers that drain into the Mississippi, there are probably other rivers in other parts of those states that drain elsewhere. Option D, if the Mississippi extends to Canada and flows down to the sea carrying sand, silt, and clay, probably some of the silt the river is carrying comes from Canada. So letter D is our final answer. Okay, let's take a look at that and how we were able to do that. As you can see, it's very fast and it's important that you're able to do it, but in this course, the first is we want to learn the techniques, apply them, and then we want to try to get faster and faster at doing it. So here it says it can be inferred from the passage. This means that the information is not directly. You have to interpret the information from the passage, 
Okay. Sandra, can you please read the passage for us? Yes, of course. Um, the Mississippi River in, and its tribute. I, I can see very really well because it's a little bit bad. Let me see if I can make it a little bit larger. Um, I think I can't, actually. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can do it like this. Zoom. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, now try one more time. Ooh, I feel that it's the same, but. All right. Wow. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, the Mississippi River is in its tributaries form the world's, the world's mm -hmm. four longest river system, two Canadian prov provinces, and all or all or parts of 31 states in the United States have been rivers that, that drain into the Mississippi. As the Mississippi River flows down to join the sea, it deposits sands, sit, uh, sit, uh, and clay, mm -hmm. and clay uh, building the Delta seaward across Louisiana's shallows, continental shelf. The Delta Marsh and its boys take Lakes and sounds provide shelter and nutrients for North America's most fer fer oh. fertile ah, fertile marine nursery. Okay. It's quite a it's quite difficult if you try to analyze. There's quite a few words that are not common in most people's vocabulary. It is yeah. not very common to discuss rivers and the deposits as well as lakes in oceans, right? Even in yes. Spanish. If we put this in Spanish, when was the last time you described uh, Rio Lempa uh, see what the, and how it function across at Salvador and which states that it crosses through and how it deposits it into the ocean? So that's why the top four is more difficult because they take vocabulary from academic forces and put it into context for you to understand. Here, it can be inferred means that you will not find the information directly. You have to get the information from comprehending this. So the first thing is you have to comprehend. You don't have to know each word, but you do have to understand the ideas that they're describing. Okay. Yes. So yes. here, as an example, I don't understand what is uh, silt. I understand what is sand. Okay. Maybe I don't understand what is clay. Thanks, I know please. what to see. So you need to go with the words that you know and try to get the context because not always you're going to know all of the words. That's why here, oh, so the Mississippi River flows down to the sea. So from the top, it goes down. It deposits sands, something I don't know, something I don't know. It builds... Right. Uh huh. The delta. Okay. So Can this I use is the battle? yes. So this is why it's letter D, because yeah. the silt deposited in Louisiana is delta is from Canada. How do I know? Because at the beginning it says that Canada and thirty one states have the rivers that go into the Mississippi. They don't say is Canada silt. But if the water comes from Canada, obviously it contaminates all of the river. It contaminates everything. In this case, not contaminates, but it helps the river with the other areas. It's okay how to get the inference. What is the function? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. So... This is the ideas that we need to be careful with when we are trying to answer some of the questions. Here we have a question. We're gonna have factual information questions. Here we're gonna have a little bit of reading, plus number one, another reading, number two, the same. As you can see, we have many different parts, many different, we're gonna have five. Unfortunately, we don't have today the time to complete them, but it's not bad. It's not a bad thing because we only, we still, is only the first day. This is the most important. 
It's the first day and we don't want to rush. We want to make sure that we understand what we are working with and what we need, okay? So let's take a look and make sure we understand how much time we have, okay? Now, how much time do you think you have for the reading test on the TOEFL? Three minutes, maybe. Interesting, very good. Actually, you have more time. You have approximately one hour, because, and I want to explain, not all the TOEFLs have the same questions or the same amount of questions. This means that as a minimum, you're going to have an hour and four minutes, or sorry, 54 minutes for your TOEFL, and some reading passages, you have up to an hour and 30 minutes almost. Well, 72 minutes. So like an hour and 10 minutes. And the readings have between 30 and 40 questions. So if you have between 30 and 40 questions, approximately you have two minutes for each question. And you say, wow, two minutes is a long time. Yes, two minutes is a long time but not when the readings are difficult, yeah. right? This is the important. When the readings are hard, for example, look at this, plus the questions and this one and others, this is when it gets very difficult because you are pushing the clock and you have to be consistent. The same way you answer in the beginning, you have to answer and answer and answer, okay? So you have to be careful with your reading time. The same for your listening. The listening is going to be between 41 minutes and 57. And they're going to give you the reading. You're going to listen to everything exactly the same. The same for the other ideas. Now, what is the difference? The difference is which TOEFL exam you take. Do you take the internet-based test, the TOEFL IBT? Do you take the TOEFL paper test? This is the TOEFL that we have in Centro Cultural. Do you take the TOEIC exam? Do you take the TOEFL with the long? There are many different types. Depending on which exam you take, this is the one that you're going to have to be careful for. Okay? Yes, sir. Great. Before we finish for today, do you have any questions? Uh, what is your last name, sir? Cubillas. Ah, Cubillas. Mr. Edwin Cubillas. Correct. Mm -hmm. well, glad to meet you, sir. Glad to meet you as well. Thank I have you. taken the TOEFL test. Just, I can also tell you that I personally have taken the TOEFL test maybe about 12 to 15 times, I think. It's about... I don't remember, but it's been more than 10 times I've taken the TOEFL exam. And believe me, each time it's difficult. It's hard. <laughs> it's, a, it's hard. It's a hard test. And you have to be clear and prepared to take it. So don't worry. I'm going to give you the tips that I learned from taking the exam many times. Okay. I want to thank you for connecting. It's a pleasure to meet you. And we will continue tomorrow with our practice the first practice questions for our TOEFL exams in reading. Okay? Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.